Hello, welcome to the Ilone Show. I'm your host, John Ilone, and in this episode, we have a guest. He is currently living in Croatia. He is a character coach and has done pretty much all the work to help people develop and engage in social skills and so on. And he's done doing pretty well ever since. And I give you Emmanuel Nobel. Greetings, sir. Greetings. So, how's life? Life is actually going, uh, what's the best way to put it? Very, very, very good. But to the point where it's, what's the best way to put it? It's mind boggling. Um, it's, let me use this as an, uh, as an example to explain to you how my life uh, feels, um, feels now. I, on a day to day basis, I feel like I'm like blasting off in a rocket ship to go pick up donuts at Saturn to deliver them to a friend in the Milky Way. Like this is this is how my life uh, feels now, and the sensation is so unreal. But the beautiful thing is, I know how to replicate it, and so this is the reason why. I talk to people, and so this is the part of the reason why I became a character uh, coach, or uh, and I'm currently developing that business right now because this place that I am in right now is, I mean, it's it's unreal. And the important thing about it, the most important thing about it, is that this mindset this current perspective that i uh, that i feel and experience in this life is one that is consistent in the difficult times is consistent in the times when you're very tired in the in the times where you've experienced rejection again and again in the times where for some people they've had this in the midst of a tragedy after a tragedy like this 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 feeling that that life is good and you were very happy to exist on this planet like this is a a replicable feeling that every human being can have the important thing is that it comes down to a matter of perfecting your character to get to this place. And your character is the person on the inside. It's not the person on the outside. And so this involves someone doing what the best way you can understand it is character workouts. So, and you have to kind of look at a character workout. Like for example, if you want to work out your courage, you need to work it out comprehensively because just because you have courage to approach a random stranger on the street and start talking to them doesn't mean you have courage to go start your second business after your first one failed. And so, and so courage, uh, it, as well as all other character muscles, are things that need to be perfected and there are multiple uh, tests and training exercises that one must do in order to perfect their character muscles and, in a sense, their whole their whole character. And and once you get there, you'll have that feeling, as I described a couple of minutes ago. I mean, it's like literally, you, the way you feel about life is unreal. You will find that you will wake up smiling sometimes, pop up and you're just straight up smiling. But the, but the important thing is that people need to understand the only way to get there is to get beat up, uh, but mentally, not, uh, not uh, necessarily physically. So you asked the question. Sorry for the for the long uh, answer, but 
Yeah, that's how I'm feeling, sir. Um, I'm feeling good, feeling great. And how about yourself? How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling pretty great. Uh, just went out for a doctor's appointment, just like general checkup, blood pressure, height and weight. Yeah, and so on. Yeah, so uh, my life is going pretty great. And then, yeah, okay. things are going to get better ever since. And you, you see what you just said right there? Things are going to get better. That's, yeah. that, that's that optimism, that hope that people absolutely need in this life, man. I'm telling you, you need to, when you talk to people, and I'm talking about you specifically, that optimism, that hope that you have, man, you got to channel that into your conversations because there are a lot of people who are, who are down on their luck, who, who don't feel like they're going to make it another day some people who don't want to make it another day. And so when they hear like that positivity coming out, coming from inside of you, when they hear things like that, when they hear messages of hope, like, like, hey, you know what? It's going to get better. It's, it's going to get better at, at every day. When they hear that, man, I kid you not, you can save someone from intense depression Literally, you could save someone from making a, a very dark decision in their life, man. So that's something that, that you, you, please keep that up, man. Please keep that up for real. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I will, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and, indeed, indeed. I hear a bit of an accent. Where are you at exactly? So I'm from Manchester in the UK. Okay. Okay. And so you're from there, but are you, or, or is that where you're living at currently? Yes, that's, that's where I'm living currently. Cool, cool. And have you, have you lived anywhere outside of Manchester or Manchester is home for you and, and you don't want to go anywhere else? No, I've, I've lived in Manchester my whole life, but I do want to like live somewhere else in the future. Every summer, I do go to Guayana in Brazil to just visit my family because my mom's Brazilian. She has very close family connections. And yeah, we just go to Brazil every summer. It's pretty great. Okay. And how were things? Because at, at one point, uh, due to the pandemic, a lot of countries have put uh, restrictions on, um, on traveling to and uh, uh, to Brazil, did that happen with you guys for for the pandemic? Or um, yes, on one end, com countries and uh, of course the UK have like prevented people from going into Brazil. But what I've heard from the Brazilian government, uh, the current president Jair Bolsonaro, he hasn't done much because. He just thinks that COVID is like an conspiracy theory and it's a rumor spread by, by the government and so on. And yeah, I don't think Brazil's government hasn't done much about combating COVID. But there are some health cares in the country that did, are doing the best to give, give aid to those in need, those who are highly vulnerable to COVID. And yeah, we were, we were aiming to go to Brazil when COVID happened, but due to the severity and the situation going on in Brazil and the UK, uh, we just didn't go. Even if we want to, we still weren't allowed to go. Okay, okay. And that was pretty hard on you guys? Oh, yes, yeah. it was very hard. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry to hear, man. Um, but speaking of, of optimism and hopefulness, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that, this, that the whole COVID situation, the pandemic, will it's and this too shall pass and so people get to do things like what you say every summer go visit go visit family or or, or go somewhere to travel because that is that is one of those important things sometimes it's it's nice to well one to see family um, but also two to to at least temporarily leave your current environment. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, a, a squeeze in a vac uh, vacation or, or, or something along those lines. So did you guys get to go or, or did you try to go anywhere else uh, during the, uh, the summer since you couldn't go to Brazil? 
Well, we did go. We did travel up to Scotland in Edinburgh just for a couple of days, and yeah, that was about it. And I also that, went. How was that? Uh, Edinburgh was great. Saw so the old town, the Royal Mile, and we also got to see the castle on the hill. Okay, what's 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 the significance about the the castle on the hill? Wait, I'm actually going to look that up right now. Edinburgh uh, castle on the hill. Let's let's see some of the the shining lights of Edinburgh. Am, am I saying it right, Edinburgh? Yes, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Okay. 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 Cool. And and so, who? Who is that castle? Uh, who was the castle for? Is there any interesting history behind that that you found out that, that blew your mind a little bit? Well, I think last time I remember, it's there, there was a, a royal family in Scotland back in the earlier half of the of the of the of the one thousands. I don't. I really don't know much about history, but I do remember it did held a royal family of Scotland before um, before there was the Act of Union before Scotland and England like unified the families together and became like one overarching sovereign state. Okay. That's all I know. History <laughs> isn't my strong point. No, nah, no, no, no worries, no worries. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> but you, you guys. It, it do seem to like uh, your royal families, though, at least in at least in the UK, because um, I mean I've met a couple of uh, people from the UK, and it seems like a, a, a decent number of them like really liked uh, the the Queen. Uh, what is what is that about? Is she just a nice, a really nice lady, or? Oh yeah, Queen Queen Elizabeth is really nice, and the royal family in general is pretty great. However, there were some scuffles with some members in particular, but I mean, yeah, I, I'm really not sure how to say about it. But we just, if any, if any, if anything bad happens in general in the UK, we just let it pass and just move on with life. We just go good. with the flow. Good, 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 good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's important, man. Is uh, to to go with the flow and to to take. Those, what's the best way to say, um, punches that life throws at you? Because I mean, that's 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 part of the journey of life. That a lot of people are. It's maybe the best way to say it's built into the game that is life. It's like the punches, the difficult times, the tragedies are built into the game, and so that's the that's the important thing that people need to know. And to train themselves, f- yeah, uh, for these uh, f- uh, for these hard times and potential tragedies, uh, and so that's as, as I said before, that's part of my work as a character coach. Is like, look, this game, this game called life, is is going to have those uh, those times, and so it's important to train things um, uh, like your 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 character muscles in order to be able to deal with those and deal with them with joy. And that um, just like you described about the UK, the people there, being able to take a hit and keep going and, and, and to keep going with, with joy and still have optimism and hope and then take another hit. Ah, man. People are starving for that, man. People are starving for that because there are there are times where you're gonna feel like you got hit with a straight up one two punch, and it's you are like on the ropes. But having that ability that you guys uh, have in the UK, and and I noticed that uh, when I. Uh, when I uh, learned about uh, World World War Two, man, you like that ability? Like, man, bombs are dropping, but you know what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to go on. You got to go on, and so that's 
people are starving, starving for that. And, and, but to get there, that takes, that takes some, uh, some training. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. And so what do you do out there in Man- in Manchester? What, what exactly, if you don't mind um, saying? No, it's, no it, it's fine, it's fine. Um, we just, um, during the night, we go out, go, go out clubbing, have a couple of drinks, and uh, yeah, just have fun. Okay, I was meaning like like what work are you uh, doing out there, or is that work for you? Are you like a, 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 a entertainer? Oh, my work. Or... Yes, sir. Oh, my, my, I'm I'm not technically employed right now, but okay. the creative work I'm doing is besides this podcast. Um, I post content to social media. Just recently, I've been accepted to the TikTok Creator Marketplace. So I might start monetizing myself on TikTok in a couple of weeks. Okay. What, it, it, can you explain to me what that means? I've never heard that term before. The, the creative marketplace, is that what you said? Yes. Yes, creative marketplace. So it's just like a sort of section on TikTok where big users on the platform get, get sent to do advertisement promotions and... Once that promotion with said user on the platform goes live to the public, paid for the promotion work that user has done. Okay, so TikTok gets paid, or did, no? Did... The, the way okay, the way it creator. works, TikTok uh-huh. pays the users for their promotion work. Okay, so you specifically now because you TikTok is going to is going to start paying you for your promotion work. Yes. Okay. And I guess, did you have to reach out to them or did they reach out to you or how did that happen? Someone put you in contact or? So a couple months ago, I, I tried to apply myself, but at the time TikTok said, this isn't available right now. You have to wait a few weeks or whatever. And there's also some requirements I didn't meet at the time. And then just fast forward like a week ago, when I checked after a very long time, I entered and it's just thought, oh my gosh, I just made it. I had no idea. And yeah. <laughs> so it okay. was just a complete shock to me because it was a couple months ago, I applied. They said, this is not available to you right now. And then just now, I just checked after a long time and oh my gosh, there I am. Wait, so what made you check after a long time? You were just kind of just like, hey, what's going on? Maybe something's changed? Did something yeah, happen? Like cas- yeah, it was just a casual check something out. It, it's not, I wasn't urgent to be on there. I was just checking because I was thinking about it and it's been a long time. It's like, okay, I'll just see what's going on on whatever this, this place is called. And I was like, oh my gosh, here I am. It, it was just a complete shock after wanting to look at something that I didn't look for a long time just because I, it was a long time I was thinking about it. It was not urgent. It was just, I'll just see how this goes, how it's going, whatever. Okay. Okay. So in uh, how did you feel the, the first time when uh, they said, oh, it's not available to you? How did, how did that make you feel? If you don't I was like, saying. well, I was like, Nah, it happens. I mean, I'm I'm really not surprised that TikTok would say this. Uh, TikTok has done a lot of questionable things in the past, and when when they said this to me, I was like, eh, so what? It happens. I was not surprised at all. I was, and then that's that's why I was completely complacent and chilled about it because I knew TikTok was going to say it. I knew this would be a lengthy process. If not, they might not happen at all. That, that's what I was expecting when I first applied. I may not even get in, but I still wanted to try it, try it anyway. And after a few months, I may as well just casually check it out, see if it's same old, same old. And then when I checked back, it just, I was absolutely shocked. Okay. So I was like, I do this. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> 
Well, I guess let me say this because you have again pointed out another one of your your character strengths. You got you got that initial rejection, and you're like, "Man, it happens. Keep yeah. moving." And I'm telling you, man, you got you got the optimism. You got the the ability to handle uh, rejection uh, because that's an important thing. One of the reasons people can't, or they, or, or let me not say it that way. One of the reasons people shy away from uh, things where they can potentially get rejected is because they need to work out um, their forgiveness muscle. Because, because for, for people, if you get rejected, I mean, that can make some people uh, very bitter, uh, angry at the person who rejected them or the entity that rejected them. And, and that, that bitterness that, that, uh, that people experience, that everybody experienced on this, on this planet, it's not a, it's not a good feeling. It's a, it's a, it's a very dark uh, place. And so you having that ability, at least in that one area of your life is tell me, man, this, these are the things that, that people uh, need. Where, if you don't mind me asking, where did you learn that from to say, ah, it happens and, and keep moving? Like, where did you, did you, did someone specifically teach you that? Or that's something that, you, that has just always been a part of you? It was, it's just something I did develop myself. Because for, for many years, there are many times that one minute I'm part of a great society and part of a big, massive, engaging group. And then the next minute, as times go by, those times start slipping away. And when it comes to moments where I was once part of a big social group where we all get along, the moment we start splitting up, doing our own things, that slowly gets away. And that's the kind of rejection that I get from my whole, my whole life. Like, when I was in high school, I was very popular. Like, very, very popular. Like, I, I ran to become head boy and pretty much won. Well, technical deputy head boy, but it's still wait, close wait, enough. Wait, 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 wait. What is head boy? I'm, I'm, so, I'm from the state, so sorry. I, I assume it's I fine, understand it. <laughs> so basically, in the UK, the, every high school has head boy and head girl, which is basically... Uh, as authoritative figure that acts like a staff, but is doesn't, but it's not technically a teacher or someone who who's a janitor or whatever. So it's a so head boy and head girl is basically a a student that acts like one of the staff, someone that you can approach to for any problems or if there's fights going on, they break it up and say, "All right." Let's, let's all calm down now. Let's uh, get along, whatever. Okay. So, yeah. Did you guys hand out candy as head boy or anything like that? Like gifts? Was that part of the? Uh, <laughs> was that part of being head boy to like boost morale with? Yeah, boost morale, engage with the pupils, and yeah, I pretty much enjoyed it. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Okay. So head boy, head girl. Okay. So. Yeah. So you were saying that... About how I dealt with rejection. Mm, yeah. So, uh, well, when I was, very, when I was at, the, at the peak of my popularity at high school, where I was easily, I can easily start engaging with conversation with people, say hi to everyone. Even the, even the young pupils, I would say hi to them. It was pretty much the last week when I graduated high school that some of these mates... Uh, turned against me in like in revolution of my popularity mm -hmm. like like why would they turn against me have I done something wrong 
I, I, re- I really thought about this, and I, for the longest time, in high school, I don't feel like I've done anything bad to them. So I was like, why would they do this? Why, why are they revolting against me? But luckily, those who didn't turn against me defended me and went and gone against those who turned against me. So that, there was some supportive courage from those who still support me till like the very end of high school against those who went against me. That's basically the kind of rejection I got, that no matter how popular or how nice you are, people don't give a damn. They will turn against you if they think you're somewhat of a threat to your social skills or publicity-wise. That's, okay. that's, that's kind of the rejection that I got in my early years of my life. And pretty much same thing with college. When, when I started college, it's the same thing, but it is, it's a lot more gradual, it's a lot more bigger than that, because there's more students, and actually got along more with people at college than I did in high school, and once, once the end of the year comes, the older students who leave, go set, they go their own ways, separate ways, and just don't give a damn about you anymore, they just do what they want to do. And it's the same thing like, a, like in high school all over again. Because no matter how great things are, even if you're very, very close friends with these people, with the older students, they're just going to, they just go their own separate ways and just, it's just hard to reconnect with them again unless something sub, subtapular happens or whatever. And this is still going on to this day. Like each year, older students, that I'm very close friends with and I've really got along with, they still go on, they'll go off to do great things and they just don't, they just don't talk to you anymore because they're, they're too invested at what they're doing. And, and in fact, they may even have friends of their own at this other place they've gone off to doing their own things. So that's, that's kind of like the advice I, buy, I live by ever since high school because I know that life is like that. And no matter what, I just gotta just gotta move on with life because just gotta deal with it, you know. Okay, and so I guess a question I have for you is, what would what would you do if everybody in the world turned against you, your your even even your family, and. Uh, and everyone who was like your friend. So everyone the, yeah. turned if everyone, against me. Yeah, if everyone turned against you, what, what would you do? You think you think you have the strength to say, you know what? Yeah. Or to... Uh, I would. Uh, I would. I, I genuinely feel I would have the strength to deal with that. Because I remember back in 2016... Uh, there, there was a news article about this app called Musical.ly. That's what TikTok, TikTok was used to be called before uh, the merger happened with another TikTok from China, which is now Douying or whatever. So anyway, in 2016, I've heard about Musical.ly has a toxic user problem. And during this time, I want to push myself to the limits because one, one of my teachers once said... The Quick question, what, regret- is, what is a toxic user? What, is that, what does that mean? So toxic it's- user is basically someone who, who swears, who, call, who calls you bad names. Got it. Basically trying to mess with you mentally and physically. Like, basically, basically what is the someone term? Someone who is troll? really mean to you. Yes, a troll. Okay. That's Got a toxic it. user. Okay. Basically had this problem at the very start, and it's been pretty bad since then. So, and at this time, I want to push myself, because one of my teachers at school once said, the biggest regret in life is not trying something new. So I thought, seeing how bad musically is, and how far I want to push myself, I thought, I should make, I should, maybe I should create an account on Musical.ly, uh, make a video, see how well I survive, how much hate I can deal with and how much of that hate 
I could channel to my publicity and my influential personal brand. And throughout the first year it, on music, when, when you say channel, through what, what what does that mean? Like, so so say for instance, you get a hundred hate messages. How would you channel that to to something good? If you feel like you can explain, try. But if not, don't worry about it. You could keep going. But okay. I, I, that was just an interesting statement that you said. So I was okay. Okay. So the way I would channel the negative energy from people saying mean things to me, I would take a I take a long look at the message, figure out what do they mean. What 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 do these people mean? Are they having a laugh? Are they just a banter? Or they just flat out mean. Once I take a look at that message, I just delete it and just move on because people only want to drag drag you down. And especially on social media, people say mean things to you just just for the sake of it, for publicity. People, there, are, there are people out there that are known to be mean to people. That's why people do it. They want they want to get recognized, they want they want attention and they want to start shit. And it's bad. It's okay. really bad. So you applied uh, a lot of patience to uh, to this to these type of messages. So you'd see it. You you you'd be patient and say, well, what is this person really saying? And then you allowed yourself to get over whatever um, feelings you may have had or, or yes or, or anger. And then you said, let's move on. Yeah, I just I just look at the message and just move on, and especially most of these messages come brother, onto my video. Brother, you you're already doing character workouts. I mean, because that's that is literally a character workout. That like I mean, it's like, hey, you know what? I need to practice, um, or I need to experience getting hate, or I need to experience. Um, having to be patient. And so you specifically did that. That is a character workout. Um, and as you can see, you've reaped some great rewards from it. The ability to, to say, hey, you know what? It, ha it happens or, uh, and to remain optimistic and move on. But yeah, but yeah go ahead and, and, and continue telling me about what, um, so after that happened, after you experienced that, uh, after you did that, that uh, character yeah. so, workout, what happened with Musical.ly? So after I deal with the hate comments on my videos and get rid of them and move on, the, I still maintain the first used on Musical.ly from the very start. And as I progress through this strategy of making whatever videos popular on was on Musical.ly at the time, uh, my publicity on the app has has gradually grew. So I started gaining hundreds and even thousands of followers, which was pretty good. And even at one time, people in public recognized me. So I went to like Germany and went to Denmark back in 2019. And pretty much some of the people in public recognized who I was on Musical.ly because how much my clout and my publicity has grew through the strategy I've adapted from the very start from Musical.ly and dealing with the hate comments and pretty much channeled those hate into positive publicity that makes me recognizable at the time. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that, that, that's pretty interesting to, that you were visiting other countries and people were recognizing you. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's 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 a decent amount of, what's the best way to say? Uh, I'll use the word you use, a uh, clout to have gained uh, to walk into another country and someone say, "Oh, hey, man, what's up?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, so let me add this one thing that a lot of people don't know when it comes to online trolls or. Are, are people who are on the internet and they're 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 saying mean things and they're trying to intentionally get someone else to have a bad day? 
part of the reason that happens is because we have an opponent in this game called life. We have an opponent that is always trying to cause us problems, is trying to uh, get us to be frustrated, uh, to get angry, to get depressed. And this opponent is the devil. And so what he does, or, or one of the things he does is he influences other people to misbehave. He influences other people to, to do hateful things. And so part of his strategy is this. So say, for instance, he influenced, you put up a video. The devil can see the video that you put up. And so, um, or even still, a person who sees your video, the devil can put a thought into their mind and say, you should say something, you should say something hurtful, or you should say something mean, or he'll, or he will generate that evil thought or that negative thought in that person's mind, um, like something simple. Uh, so person sees your video and the thought that comes into their mind, uh, I hate this guy. That thought might not necessarily be coming from that person. That thought uh, could have easily been generated uh, by the devil. And the reason why he, why he would do something like that is because, so this way he influences the troll to, to start to feel hate because he, he wants people to feel hate. And then from influencing the troll to do that, then he could get them to send you a message or to post the message under your video so that then this way you can, uh, he can find a way to try and make you feel bad as well. And so, and, and so essentially, uh, well, what's the best way to say? The devil can be very e efficient with his evil because he just got two birds with one stone by doing that. If he influences that person to, to, hate, to, to hate you or to have negative thoughts about you, if he influences them enough, he gets them into a dark place and then they try and influence you into a dark place. And so, and so that's part of his, his strategy that a lot of people don't understand um, that is specifically happening with um, this this group of people that um, we call online trolls or, or or toxic users, and so that is that's one of those. If you use the internet, that's one of those things that people need to know. Is that look there is there is an enemy, an opponent in this game called life who is trying to make your life as difficult as possible. And so, and so he'll, he'll try and put thoughts in your head. He'll try and influence you to go into negative and, uh, and depressive thought patterns, but he's also going to use other people to try and get you to influence you into a negative uh, thought pattern. And so, uh, or a dark uh, uh, thought pattern. And so that's why it's important uh, to, to do character workouts because then this way, uh, I mean, you're literally training for this game called life. You're training for those difficult times. Like that question that I posed to you before, okay, what do you do uh, or, or how would you react if everybody turned against you? And so, um, because in some situations, in some people's lives, something like that is going to happen. And so having the ability to, 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 to stay optimistic, to stay hopeful, to, to even say, you know what, it happens, but it's going to get better. And, uh, and to also understand it, to say, I'm not going to let the devil get me down. I'm going to keep going in life. I'm going to keep on striving. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have uh, happiness. And I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. I'm not going to let the devil steal my happiness. 
And sometimes that might take uh, a, a day or two or a, a few weeks or months to years for people to go through that uh, an intense um, mini scrimmage against the devil. But it's, uh, I guess I'll close on this point. Once you get through that and you, and you get through it with the right attitude, ah, man, man, you've, you're ready for the next level. You are ready for the next level of the, uh, this game called life. And once you, once you know how to manufacture, manufacture that joy and that happiness, forget it, man. You are, you are walking above the ground. But most importantly, you can be that person that people turn to and say, man, can you help me? Can you, can, can you help me deal with as you dealt with? Can you help me deal with uh, online trolls? And uh, I mean, it, it, it takes a process to be able to, uh, for, uh, to be able to, to deal with that, but that's a, uh, and, and it takes a lot of learning about the devil and, uh, and how to play offense against him uh, as as well, but man, you did something. You did something important there. You did something special there with your musically, um, with your approach to musically. Don't take that lightly, brother. Do not take that lightly. Thank you. Well, and this is all the time we have for this episode. It, I, I, I absolutely enjoyed having you here, Manuel. Yeah, it was it was a good chat. It was it was a good chat, man. I'm, oh, yeah. I, I'm happy to speak with you, and I, I hope you get to go uh, back to Brazil this upcoming summer. Yeah, same. And until next time, stay tuned for more. This episode of The Lonely Show is brought to you by Matchmaker.fm. Matchmaker is a platform where users can search up and buck in with podcasting shows to do ad swaps, content collaborations, and make guest appearances. Now, as someone who just started making a podcast and want to look for guests or do some form of content collaboration, this is the platform I highly suggest to any of those people. And if you do want to be in the next episode of The Lonely Show, all you got to do is go online to matchmaker.fm, search up The Alone Show, send me a direct message, and yeah, just leave the rest to me. So what are you waiting for? Go online, make your very own guest profile today at matchmaker.fm. <laughs>